high on Ella. It's Ian here. So, yeah, we, we just uh, sort of had a conference call. I was, I think John did most of the talking, but I saw you in the background there. Sorry, I didn't get to say hi. But anyway, um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you how to do some buffering in, in QGIS. So I'll just open up a session and show you how to do something uh, now. Okay, so I am going to just add some random layers here. So I need to go and find something that we can use, or maybe I'll create something from scratch. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll add some, uh, what have we got here? Let's add some 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 shapefile data from, from our project. And that didn't add, so hang on a second. What did I, did I choose the wrong thing there? Let's just double check that I've got the right file formats. Let me add these layers here. Okay, so let's say you want to buffer a couple of things and you're going to buffer a point file. So I'll just go and create a point file quickly. Uh, first of all, let, let me just make this uh, transparent so I can see what's going on. And what color should I make my boundaries? Something like that. Okay, and okay, so let's go and add some base data so I can just quickly capture something that we can use. There's the satellite image. All right, now let's go down here. Okay, so I'm going to create a point file that you can use. So we're going to go create a point file. And you've obviously already got your, your layers that you're looking to work with. So I'll just go and create some random one that I will delete at a later stage. I'm just going to call it, let's just call it structures. Okay. And it's a point and I am going to use the same geographical projection as this uh, project, which is EPSG4326. And if we need to change this, we will. But I'm going to start off by just selecting that. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a. I'm going to give it a distance. Maybe yeah. Let me just call it, call it distance. Distance. And I'll show you what this is now. And it's going to be a, a whole number. And I'm going to add that to list. And I think that is fine. Ugh, you know what? We can maybe just say. Just for argument's sake, let's say, let's add something else. Uh, let's call it category, add to list. Okay. So now I'm not sure what this is. This looks like it could be a school. So let's start capturing and add this structure. And it's going to be a uh, secondary school. Let's give it a buffer. Okay, now this is the buffer distance. Now you don't have to use this, but it can be useful. So if we go 500, let's do 500 there. I think that's right. And then we'll just call this school. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to change this color so we can see it. I, I prefer uh, bright colors when I'm working on aerial photographs. So maybe pink again. I'm a big fan of pink in GIS. Okay, there we go. So there's the school. Uh, what else can we add? Um, there's something down here. I don't know what this is. This could be a crash of sorts. Maybe let's just do that. Let's call that a crash. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called. So I'll just make up a name there. And then that's a crash. Okay, now this one, dis distance, we can make a hundred, no, let's make it 200. Okay, so now we've got a field in there with, uh, that is a, a number field, and we've given it a couple of, two, well, two different values. Uh, let's call this, we'll call him the mayor, two distance, let's make this one now 350. Okay, and this is just a house, let's say. Okay, so I've got some information that I can now buffer. I'm going to save that. 
I just want to double check. Well, let's zoom to the layer. See that they're all there. One, two, three. That's fine. Maybe zoom out a bit more so I can see them. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a buffer on these structures. So that's easy enough. All you're going to do is use the vector um, drop down menu. And then under geoprocessing tools, you can select buffer. All right. And you can select select a buffer field or you can just select the actual um, uh, well you can enter random distance in here but now if we look at this we see it says degrees and exclamation mark now that is because the projection that I chose is a geographic coordinate reference system projection so I'm just going to change that quickly so if I close this what I will do is I'm just going to change this to the UTM zone 35 south which is the one that you use I believe so if I have a look at previously used projections there it is there I'm going to apply that okay so now that has changed and I just want to change this so I'm going to say save as save feature as and we'll call it structures and then I'll just say UTM okay so 35 south okay so now the reason I actually think it's good that I showed you that is because okay and I need to choose the projection is because the program will will buffer something in the distance of the units of the layer that you're wanting to buffer so because the previous one was a geographic coordinate reference system it would buffer in decimal degrees and you'd get a gigantic buffer because instead of 500 meters it would have put 500 decimal degrees so that's why I'm going to project this now to UTM zone 35 south because the units for this layer are in meters and it'll buffer in meters so let's say OK and you can see it's added a new layer to our project if I just change the color we can see where it is and it's sitting just on top of that pink layer right so we can turn this one off and we can maybe make this one slightly bigger so we can see it and then I'll go ahead and buffer that one and you'll now see when I go back to the buffer tool there won't be an exclamation mark next to the buffer option see now it's asking it's telling me that it's going to do it in meters okay all right so this is just going to run a straight buffer let's just make this 250 and I'm going to create a temporary buffer for this but if you wanted to go and save this buffer as a permanent layer on your project, you just go and select this, save to file, and then go to your project file and give it a name and call it structures buffer 500 meters or whatever you like, whatever works for you. So I am not going to, I'm going to use a temporary layer just so I can show you how this works. So in this instance, we're just using, we're buffering each of the three features with a distance of 250 meters. And we say run and close. And there we go. Okay, so there we go. We got we got buffers. We put this. We make this slightly transparent. We can go down here, make this 50 or 46 somewhere on there, and now put this on top of that one. There we go. So that's a little temporary layer. If you had gone and saved it to your project, it would be a permanent layer. Now what the project does is it gives it a random name. Well, it's not random. It gives it the name of the process that took place. So you can rename this to whatever you like I don't know buffer it was was it 250 250 meters okay so if you ran that buffer again and it added a new layer you wouldn't have two layers called buffered buffered okay so anyway that was using the buffering using one unit for the buffer distance now under geoprocessing tools there should be another option to buffer multiple to buffer on multiple uh, values or on the actual uh, what do you call it on the field so now if I look at this option it is not there okay so I'm going to close this I'm going to open up this little tool here now this is the uh, toolbox which you can access via the plugins menu so if you click on plugins you go to manage and install plugins and then of course you'll need a connection to the internet and then you search for processing okay and if this tool is not turned on then you'll need to turn it on and install it okay so if that's installed you can close it and then you may need to turn it on let's see I don't see an option here so 
so you should be once you've turned it on you should be able to see this little little button here or you can go via the processing menu so you'll have a processing menu and if you click on toolbox it'll take you to the same place All right so now what you can type so now the, this is a this is sort of like a, a link to all of your your processing tools and all sorts of other tools and we are going to search for one called buffering so we're going to go buffer okay there we go so we go buffer and if we want to create a multiple ring buffer using um, what do you call it fields that's that's pretty much what we're after so let's have a look fixed buffer distance variable buff variable buffer distance so this is the so these are the the um, the tools that come processed with uh, come installed with QGIS and then these are the saga tools which are also linked to QGIS but they originate from the saga GIS software but that's not really important to know all you need to do is make sure that you choose the variable distance buffer okay so now we need to choose the the layer to buffer which is structures UTM and now the buffer distance field now that is where we created that distance field I'm going to select that scaling factors all fine 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 you can select dissolve buffers now we didn't do this previously if you did select dissolve buffers in the previous example then these two this wouldn't be a polygon and polygon this would be one polygon and these would have been merged okay that, that line wouldn't be there so we'll do that this time around we're going to select dissolve buffers and we're going to do the same again. We're not going to create a, a field on our drive. I'm just going to create a temporary field. I'm going to click Run. And you'll see that it'll be slightly different because it's using different buffer distances depending on the field chosen. So if we close that, you can now see that the distance, if we just go and label on distance quickly to show you that. So UTM, no labels. We're going to single label. We'll draw a buffer around the label and then we'll just say distance okay 200 500 350 so now close that down and use a little uh, distance tool you can see that from this point to the edge of the buffer is going to be 200 let's close there there we go 200 and this one will be 350 okay so you see what it's done there we've used a field to use a variable distance buffer so there's two ways to do it and we used one option using the the vector geoprocessing tools and our other option was using the processing tools and we searched for buffer and used a variable distance buffer and that's pretty much how you did it oh and the other thing remember these two we chose the option to to what was it dissolve the the buffers so there's no line between these two buffers if we haven't hadn't chosen well let's quickly do that quickly let's show you what that would look like so if we didn't choose the dissolve buffer option and we just ran it you'll see there's a, there'll be a big, big line here between the two okay so now there's two different polygons but they're sitting on top of each other which isn't ideal um, unless you wanted to separate them out uh, in this instance we wanted to join them so we removed that option okay and that's pretty much how you buffer uh, points you can do the same for um, like a river except instead of choosing a point file you choose the river you can also buffer a polygon if you buffer a polygon it'll buffer outside of the polygon boundary if you buffer a river it'll buffer on each side of the the line like it does with a, a point it buffers around that point okay so that's those are maybe the thing to do is just to try buffering um, three different shape types and see what results you get and, and then try and figure out when you might use those options. But that's pretty much how you do it. Uh, hope that helped. Cheers.